Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about retro video games. So when I first started my channel, I focused on the handful of NES games that I owned and played as a kid. Felix the Cat, Star Tropics, Hudson Hawk, for better or for worse. But there's one game that I used to play a lot that I never made a video on, because how much could I really say about it? Well, I've thought of some things to say. It's Monopoly. Monopoly, based on the board game of the same name, was developed by Sculptured Software and released for the NES in 1991. These developers would also make the Game Boy version, which is very similar, and the versions for Super Nintendo and Genesis, which are fairly different. Monopoly is an economics-themed board game with the objective of buying properties with which you can collect rent from the other players. You win by driving everyone else into bankruptcy while getting rich yourself. For almost 90 years, the game has been teaching folks terrible lessons. That becoming a rich, ruthless real estate mogul while the rest of society can't pay to put a roof over their heads is something to aspire to. And that being a landlord is a real job. The video game brings the board game to consoles without the tedium and mess of having to set up the board, keep track of fake money, or worrying about losing and then stepping on one of those tiny green plastic houses. It also speeds things up considerably. I've always been a huge fan of games. Not just video games, but board games, card games, game shows. And as a 10-year-old, I spent a somewhat worrying amount of time playing Monopoly by myself in my room. I had friends, really, but who the hell else wants to play Monopoly? You can play the game with two to eight players, any combination of humans and computers. There's a gallery of eight computer characters you can select from to play against, and they all look like rich assholes. You can start the game from scratch or choose a number of options, like putting a time limit on things, or you can use the game editor to tinker with starting money, placements, and properties. Once things get started, you're presented with a top-down view of the board. While you can't see the names of each space from this view, it's all very clear and easy to keep track of. A hand appears over the board and rolls the dice, then you watch your chosen token travel to its space. Here you get a close-up, which gives you the choice of buying the property you've landed on or sending it to auction. Or you pay rent if someone else already owns it. The UI also updates to show a representation of all properties, graying out those which are owned by opponents and showing your own in color. Every action has a little animation to go along with it. A cash register gobbles up the appropriate bills when you need to pay something, greenbacks fall from the sky when you pass go and collect $200, and a hammer builds houses as they are purchased. The menu is also very clear and intuitive, giving you a place to make trades with other players, view anyone's assets, mortgage or unmortgage properties, or buy houses if you have all properties of one color. The pace of the game is pretty good. All of the animations are snappy, so you're not spending too much time just watching the computer players do their thing. However, if you're impatient, you can also tell the game to hurry up to make turns even faster and speed up animations. Occasionally, the AI for computer players can be annoying, like when they keep trying to make the same trade over and over when you don't agree the first time. They don't know how to take no for an answer. However, their single-mindedness can also be taken advantage of. Most computer players will be willing to trade pretty much everything they have in order to complete a color group of properties. They also don't notice when things are mortgaged. So, if they want something from you, you can mortgage it first, then trade it, costing them money and giving you some extra. Design flaw in the game? Possibly. Or maybe the creators just wanted to let the market decide. According to Wikipedia, there are 28 different video game versions of Monopoly, which I think is lowballing it by quite a bit. After spending so much time with NES Monopoly, every other version I tried was a bit of a disappointment. What makes this one so special? It's the sound effects. The game doesn't really have a soundtrack as much as a series of short jingles for a huge amount of actions. There's the theme song, which is quite catchy, but there's no backing track for the actual game. However, unless you're idle during your turn, things are never silent. 
It starts with the dice roll, then the bassy thumping of your token moving across the board. Comparing it to the Super Nintendo version, which does boast some nicer animations and graphics, it's just so much more satisfying to roll and move on NES. The Game Boy version, while visually almost identical other than being in black and white, tries its best, but the sound chip doesn't quite cut it. I also tried getting into the PlayStation game, but it is dull. Lifeless animations, background music that sounds like something you'd hear in an elevator, and underwhelming sound effects. As you play on NES, you'll hear the sound of a sold stamp coming down when you buy a property, or music and a cash register noise when you pay rent. The music for rent paying is slightly different for every single character. There's also music when the menu is opened, and it too has eight different variations. Composer Paul Webb did not need to go this hard, but I appreciate that he did. Pulling a community chest card has a jingle, and Chance has one too. The noise when you land on the income tax space is especially dramatic. As rich landowners, the idea of not being able to exploit tax loopholes to avoid giving anything back is quite offensive. There are also a few voice lines used, like when you get out of jail or an auction concludes. Considering how human voices are not one of the NES's fortes, I think they sound pretty good. Don't be coming back now. This cartridge brings the rules of the board game Monopoly to life, but improves upon it by just being more efficient. But did you know that before Monopoly was published in 1935, a very similar game with a very different ideal was invented by someone who would never get the credit for it? The original rules and board for the game that would become Monopoly were created in the early 1900s by Elizabeth McGee. She called her game the Landlord's Game, and it was meant to show the downsides and inequality created by a system of land grabbing and rent gouging. The game included two sets of rules. In one, all were rewarded when wealth was created. In the other, the goal was to amass individual wealth and crush the competition. McGee patented her game in 1903, and it became popular on college campuses, with progressive individuals, and with Quakers. Thirty years later, it made its way into the notice of Charles Darrow, who would drop the more progressive half of the rules and sell Monopoly to Parker Brothers. The game company would also buy the rights to the Landlord's Game, but for a relative pittance and just to prevent it from infringing on the territory of Monopoly, not to actually produce or sell it. This purpose was unknown to Elizabeth when she agreed to sell. She would never get any official recognition or make any royalties for her original invention of the game. And its purpose? To contrast two economic systems and highlight the problems of monopolies and income inequality would be completely subverted. So that's Monopoly. If you really want to play it, I feel like this version is the way to go. It takes a game that can honestly be overly long and get a little tedious, and turns it into something much more entertaining. Remember, though, this is just a game. In reality, you should know that monopolies are bad. Owning and renting land is not actual labor, and housing should be a human right. If you want to see more, check out my old, old, old video on Felix the Cat. Or something else. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.